Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to introduce you to a fantastic vector-based graphics package called Inkscape. This can be downloaded for free to install on a PC, onto a Mac, onto a Linux system. In fact, you can even install Inkscape on a Raspberry Pi. To understand Inkscape, you have to understand the difference between a pixel and a vector-based graphic. And for that reason, we're looking at these two sheep. Now, the sheep on the left is a pixel-based image, which has been produced in a package, for example, like Photoshop or GIMP. And as you can see, as we zoom in on the image, you can start to see the small squares, the pixels, out of which the image is made. In other words, the image has a fixed resolution. If you zoom in too far, you haven't got good quality. On the other side, though, we have a vector-based image of the same sheep, producing a package like Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator. And what this means is that the image is defined mathematically as vectors, as coordinates, as mathematical formula. And therefore, however much we zoom in, you still see a sharp image. And this means that vector-based images that are created by packages like Inkscape are best for things like producing, say, logos, or producing graphics where you need to zoom in for a lot of detail on certain parts of the image. Right, it's now time to get the software. So here I am on my Windows 10 desktop, and I'm going to go to the Chrome browser, where I've already loaded up the website inkscape.org. As you can see, there's a download link right on the first page, so I'll click on download. And it'll take me through to a download page where I can pick my operating system, Linux, Windows, or Mac. And I'm going to pick here Windows because I'm on a Windows PC. And it'll give me then two options. I've got either 32 or 64-bit versions. I'm currently running on a 64-bit version of Windows, so I'll pick the 64-bit version of the software. And then we can save that. It's going to go to my download directory. That's fine. So I'll save that package. It'll save down there. It's about, what, 93 megabytes. So it's not too big a download, but we'll just let that whiz through. And uh, there we are, that's completed. So if I just get rid of the browser, I'll go back to my download directory. There it is, look, happily sitting there, and we can click on the package to install it. And hopefully, there we are, we've got a nice little installer. Welcome to Inkscape um, 0.91. You can see it's still really in development, but very, very good package nonetheless. Been around for quite a while. Click on next and uh, accept the license, of course, because I always do. And if we don't, we can't get the software. And I'll do a typical install for once. Don't often do those, but I think I'll do that here and install, and it'll install it on my system. Do I want to make changes to my computer? Yes, people always worry when they see these. This is nothing worrying. This is simply checking you really should be installing software. Um, it's not a virus or anything like that. Do not worry about these messages. I know many of you do worry about those messages. You send me emails and things about them. They're absolutely fine. Anyway, it's now installing the software. I'll just whiz through that. And uh, there we are. It is now installed on our system, and we can see we've got an icon ready to operate up here. Now, just before we do that, I will note that you can even install this, as I said at the start of the video, on your Raspberry Pi. To do that, you go to your uh, Raspbian or other Raspberry Pi desktop, go to a terminal, and type uh, sudo apt-get install and uh, ink scape, and then obviously enter, and then you'd wait a little minute while that's gone on with installing. Do I want to install? Of course I do, yes, and go on. You'd wait for this to uh, complete. And uh, there we are, it's finished. And we can now close down our uh, terminal and we would find in our menu, under graphics, we now have available Inkscape. Hurrah! Right, with the package installed on whatever operating system you're using, let's go and launch the uh, Inkscape package. And uh, here we are, this is what it looks like when you first installed. But before I actually explain to you some of the tools you've got down here, I thought I'd show you a couple of illustrations I've done myself in a vector graphics package. So for example, we'll start with uh, this one. This is an illustration you may actually recognize. It's from a recent Raspberry Pi video, a Raspberry Pi wiring diagram. And every element here is a vectored piece of graphics. So for example, this element down here is wiring to connect. I could go down there and do edit and copy, and then edit 
paste in place to copy on top of itself, and then move it up that copy to have another wiring element here. That's the sort of thing you can do very easily in a vector-based package. To show you something slightly different, let's pull in uh, this. This is an illustration of a how to clone a sheep from a, one of my books a few years ago about a sheep cloning and many more other things, obviously. If we go across and just zoom in on that sheep, we'll click on the magnifying glass and just zoom in a little bit, and then just reposition more nicely on, on screen. We can illustrate here very clearly that this sheep is all made up of vector-based elements, if I can get it nicely centered on the screen for you there. It doesn't want to sit there. Oh, we'll leave it about there. I don't, I don't really care. Anyway, we can see, for example, if I pick up the uh, selection arrow there, that the back of the sheep is a separate object here. And I could therefore, for example, change the fill color to have one of those nicer yellow-backed sheep. Every object in Inkscape is a path, which is defined by lots of different nodes. Now, to show you what that means, let's select this object, but we'll go and actually edit it using the node editor, the second arrow down here. And when we click that, you can see all the nodes actually appear. So I can click on one, it's got little handles, look, I can move it around and move its handles around. We can make it a more spiky sheep. It'll be obviously quite different doing that. It might not like this. We don't care, we're going to do it. Anyway, that doesn't look very comfortable, does it? We could also, for example, alter its mouth. We could turn its mouth from being uh, happy to being sad by altering the, the handles on the nodes. We could make its eyes look very angry, not just uh, unhappy, but angry unhappy. That's a rather unhappy looking sheep. So that's the sort of thing you can do in a vector-based package. So let's now do something from scratch. Now I'll go to File, and I won't go File and New, I'll go File and Template. Because there's lots of great templates here in Inkscape. Uh, you can do everything from standard paper sizes to things like CD covers, standard uh, video sizes for computers, and there's even some video presets if you're doing video work, as you may well be if you're watching this channel. So create from template, and there is our nice 16.9 document, and we can zoom in and out using the plus and uh, minus keys on the keyboard. So let's go and add a straightforward object. We could add, for example, a rectangle. Take that rectangle and draw it on the screen there, draw it out. Once we've drawn it, it's a standard shape. We can then go and move it around. We can rescale it, move it. There's our lovely rectangle. Let's draw, for example, an ellipse. Take an ellipse and draw it out there, exactly the same way. Um, we can build up shapes by adding them to your drawing. You can also combine the different paths of these different objects. So if I select my rectangle and select my ellipse, I could go to a um, path and I could do a difference and it would cut one from the other and we're starting to end up with a more sophisticated object. Now at the moment that object has got an outline, what they call a stroke, it hasn't got a fill. And I can see that if I go down to the bottom left of the screen down here, it says stroke, black, fill, none. But if I double click down here, it'll open up over here our fill and stroke dialog. You can do lots of really important things in this dialog. We could go, for example, to Fill, and currently it's got no fill, but we could click on Solid to give it a solid fill. That's black, we might want black, but I think we want, say, I don't know, let's do yellow. You can set colors using RGB, HSL, CYMK, Wheel, etc. You've got lots and lots of control in this package. You've also got things like gradient fills. You can do all kinds of effects here. In Stroke, we can obviously change the, the color. It's currently black. We could change it to, say, red, but I think I'll leave it as black. But we've also got the stroke style dialog here. So at the moment we've got a, a pixel thickness of 19.767 for some reason. We could make it say 40, a much thicker stroke on the object. We could decide to give it rounded corners, or we could give it beveled corners like that. I'd rather like the, the say a rounded corner on that. So we're starting to create a more sophisticated object. So that's the basis of creating objects in Inkscape. Okay, I thought I'd show you a few more tools, so we'll get rid of our lovely object here. Uh, we've got, for example, down here a pen tool, which can draw bezier curves or straight lines. Very important tool. So if we click on that, and I go back to our actual document, let's just drag it across a bit. I'll still need this uh, dialog over here. If I just do a click and release, and click and release again, and click and release again, and click and release again, and then press Enter, it will have drawn us a nice straight line. 
And again, we could go back in, we can make that say a thicker line, great big thick line there. We could give it rounded ends. That's rather nice, isn't it? We could potentially give it um, arrows on the corners. And we've got markers we can change. So we can give it an arrow on one end there. That's a rather large arrow, isn't it? Then we should give it a slightly smaller arrow. Look, looks rather cool. And again, this is all editable. We could go in and change the nodes and move bits around. We're starting to build quite a nice looking object. Looks quite, quite wacky that, doesn't it? Quite, quite like that. We can also do objects with curves in. So I get rid of that thing. And um, we go back to our Bezier pen tool again. And if I now click and hold, it'll draw out a Bezier handle, release, you'll see the curve, and take it to there. Click and hold again, release and see the curve. And then I think I'm not going to hold on that one. I'll click it to join that up. And we've drawn that nice sort of a strange looking type of shape. Maybe it's a bit like a little mouse, isn't it? And again, we can go back in and we can alter the curves to actually alter how it, how it looks, what sort of particular shape we want. That's definitely like a mousey's head. I think it's a little tiny cartoon mouse. So I think I'll just turn it into a cartoon mouse to show you I can do that. Uh, maybe go into the fill and we'll give it a nice, um, what colour fill for a cartoon mouse? Maybe a sort of browny colour from down here, a little bit too dark. That I think of that, maybe, maybe that sort of colour. And uh, as it's a mouse, we'll give it some little ears. Maybe up here, that's a nice little ear, which again wants to be, um, oh, that's a bit dark, wasn't it? Want the same one, roughly. Something about like that. And then, of course, it'll want some little eyes. There's a little eye for our, our mouse. And I think I'll make the fill on that um, white because it wants to be a nice little white eye. And finally, we'll draw our little, little eye in there, which is going to have, clearly going to have to have a black fill, isn't it, to make it a proper little eye. So there we are. You can draw or quite nice graphics quite quickly in Inkscape. So I thought I should really show you the uh, text tools. There's lots of text tools here, obviously, in Inkscape. You obviously want to do text in lots of bits of artwork. So if I type in some text here, um, explaining computers.com is obviously everybody's favorite text. And I'll make it slightly smaller than that. I think maybe, um, what do I want, about 90 maybe, 92 will fit quite, quite well on screen. Let's make it bold as well. So there's a piece of text and you can create text for users, graphics and logos, all sorts of things. And you can do various things with it if you want to with filters. So for example, there's masses of filters here. I don't know, we've got say, what shall we pick? Glowing metal, all sorts of effects you might want to use on your text. But for now, I will get rid of that. But the other thing I want to show you is more fundamental, which is how you can manipulate text with a path. So if I go down here to our, our Bezier tool and I just sort of click and uh, hold and uh, click and hold again, and uh, that'll do and enter. I've now drawn a nice path there. What if I wanted to put my lettering onto this path? Well, you can do that fairly easily. You can just select your lettering, select your path, hold down shift to select both of them, and then go text and uh, put on path. You could probably have guessed that one yourself. Now, you might not want it looking exactly like that. So you could select your, your path here and uh, double click down there on the uh, stroke so we can get the dialogue up and we might decide we don't want a stroke at all so it looks just we can just see the lettering or we might want to put in um, a very thin stroke maybe about say a 10 or something on that so it looks a bit better alternatively we might want to raise our text so it's worth noting you can select text on a path and move it around you've got all sorts of text control tools here so you can control the uh, spacing between letters, the spacing between words, the kerning, and here we've got the vertical shift, which I think if we get about a minus 60, I would guess there, we'll put it nicely above the line. So there we are, a piece of text sitting above a line. And the great thing is, it's all still interactive. If I go into a node editor for the, uh, the path we're working from, we can still move that around and the text will flow with it because this is clearly just letters sitting above a mathematical shape. This is the beauty of vector-based graphics. I love the way that moves around. You could do lovely animations from this. You'll notice the, uh, the letters are not deforming. The letters are just moving around. They bump into each other occasionally. You might want to go and kern these quite a bit to make it work nicely, but actually this works very well. You can do all sorts of fantastic text effects in Inkscape.
Right, there's a danger this becomes a very long video because there's so much functionality here in Inkscape. As you can see in the menus here, masses and masses of functionality for controlling paths, breaking paths apart, putting them together, making sophisticated shapes, doing all sorts of fantastic color effects. So I haven't even shown you things like, for example, the star tool, you can draw lovely little stars, which is amazing, isn't it? There's a spiral tool, draws fantastic spirals. We must have put a better, better stroke on that, wasn't we? Have that showing up properly, and obviously rounded corners on the end, put that, that down there. There's even a freehand tool. You can draw freehand in this package like that, and then when you finished it, it's a path, so you can change the stroke on it. And you can even edit it, because what it's done is just create loads of nodes by your freehand drawing. So you could go in and actually edit, if you had a bit of time, your, your freehand activity there. Anyway, the final thing I must tell you about is file formats. Now, if we go to File and Save here, it'll save it as the native format in Inkscape, which is SVG, which was not created for Inkscape. SVG is the Scalable Vector Graphics format, part of XML. This has been created and standardized by the World Wide Web Consortium since I think it was 1999. So if you work in Inkscape and save your files in SVG, you're in very good company. You've got an open standard you're, you're using for your work. Let's just call this old drawing will do. Having said that, you probably don't want to work in SVG in terms of taking your images into other packages. Say you want to load them into a video or you want to load them into, say, a, a document. So you might want to save as something else and you'll be pleased to see there is massive support here. All sorts of things you can save as. You can create documents and save them as PDFs. You can save as PNG. You can save as PostScript, as, as EPS. All sorts of structured and unstructured formats are available for you. And also note, you've got great compatibility with Adobe Illustrator. So for example, if I go to open here, we've already looked at the sheep, but the sheep was actually taken from a book and the picture was drawn in Illustrator many years ago. And it's actually an AI file, an Adobe Illustrator file. And if I open that up, you will see it gives us the preview. For some reason, it says PDF import settings. This is not a PDF, it's an AI file, but we can bring it in and we are back to the image, hopefully in a second, that we started with. There's a certain nice symmetry that ending the video back with the sheet we saw right at the start. Slight change in colours there, I think, because of the colour profiles are different between the machines. This was created for print purposes. But hopefully I've given you an assurance there you can take images back and forth with Adobe Illustrator and other packages with no problems at all. As you've probably gathered, I really like Inkscape. For a start, it's just a great graphics package. But more than that, it's a real alternative to Adobe Illustrator, and it therefore decreases my reliance on that closed package. But now that's it for another video. Please remember to subscribe and to like this video and all that other social media stuff that helps this channel. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.